The Great Hurricane, 1938, by Cherry Burns, chronicles one of the most devastating storms in American history. The hurricane that struck the northeastern United States on September 21, 1938. This natural disaster, known as the Long Island Express, caught many by surprise and left a trail of destruction across the region. Burns recounts the lead-up to the day of the hurricane, exploring the weather patterns and atmospheric conditions that gave rise to the storm. In the 1930s, weather forecasting was not as advanced as it is today. Meteorologists had limited technology and relied heavily on understanding the signs of nature to predict weather. As a storm gathered intensity in the Atlantic, it went largely unnoticed by the U.S. Weather Bureau, which failed to grasp the severity of the approaching hurricane. The book describes the storm's formation off the coast of West Africa and its trek across the Atlantic, where it gained strength from the warm ocean waters. As the storm approached the United States, it traveled northward at an unusual speed, making landfall in Long Island and Connecticut with little warning. The hurricane had transformed into a Category 3 storm, with winds reaching up to 120 miles per hour and higher gusts. Burns vividly depicts the destruction wrought by the hurricane. Coastal towns were the hardest hit, with storm surges obliterating entire communities, flooding streets, wrecking homes, and uprooting trees. Inland, the damage was severe as well, with high winds tearing down power lines, causing widespread outages, and rendering communication lines inoperative. The book offers personal narratives and accounts from survivors, adding a human element to the catastrophe. These stories provide a fragmented yet intimate portrait of the chaos and fear experienced by families as they struggled to find shelter and protect their loved ones. Burns gives a face to the disaster as she documents the lives that were lost and the heroic efforts made by many to save others. Notably, the book mentions how victims were unaware of the storm's approach due to the lack of advanced warning systems, leaving many unprotected and taken by surprise when the hurricane hit. One of the storm's most striking features was the speed with which it inundated areas with water. Burns details the experiences of people who found themselves trapped in homes and buildings as floodwaters rose rapidly. There are harrowing tales of individuals holding on to debris for survival and of families separated by the storm who faced uncertainty regarding the safety of their loved ones. Burns also explores the impact on infrastructure. Roads, bridges, and railways were washed out, hampering rescue efforts and recovery operations. The 1938 hurricane reshaped the coastline and altered landscapes, permanently changing the geography of some areas. In the aftermath, the scale of devastation became clear. Approximately 700 people lost their lives to the hurricane, and thousands were left homeless. The economic toll was staggering, with damages running into the millions of dollars. A significant sum at the time, especially as the country was emerging from the Great Depression. The book dissects the response to the catastrophe, criticizing the lack of preparedness and the inadequacies of the disaster relief efforts. Burns examines how the hurricane exposed the vulnerabilities of the affected communities and the nation's emergency preparedness. However, despite the shortcomings, there were many instances of communities coming together to help rebuild and support those affected by the disaster. In the broader context, The Great Hurricane, 1938, discusses the lessons learned from the hurricane. It highlights advancements in meteorological science prompted by the storm's devastation, leading to better forecasting techniques and more effective warning systems. The book also underscores the importance of respecting the power of nature and the need to prepare for future events. Furthermore, Burns scrutinizes the social and political ramifications of the hurricane. The disaster influenced policies relating to emergency management and urban development. There was also an awareness raised about the need for improved communication and collaboration between meteorologists, government agencies, and the public. As the narrative unfolds, the book serves as a testament to human resilience and the will to overcome adversity. Survivors, stories reflect a sense of community and determination as people came together to face the monumental task of recovery and rebuilding. The Great Hurricane, 1938, concludes by looking at the long-term effects of the hurricane. 
It left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the northeastern United States and stands as a warning of the potential destruction that hurricanes can bring to seemingly unprepared regions. The storytelling in the book seeks to ensure that the tragedy of the Long Island Express is not forgotten and that the storm's legacy continues to inform and improve our response to international disasters. Overall, Sherry Burns crafts a compelling account of the 1938 hurricane that combines meteorological details with personal stories to paint a full picture of the event. Her narrative is both a historical record and a reminder of the unpredictability of nature, urging readers to acknowledge the importance of foresight and readiness in the face of potential future catastrophes. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.